Alright, it's time to take a look at the Garmor. The Garmor is the only Mordu ship that I haven't been flying up until this moment. I have the Ortus, I have the Barghest, but I don't have the Garmor yet. However, I do plan to use this little ship as my main PvP frigate. Now, I believe that this ship will work about the same as the Ortus, after all, uh, it is a Mordor ship, so the same principle will apply to all of them, but first, let's take a look at the ship info, and let's take a look at the basic info, trade description, minus 50% missile torpedo flight time, plus 200% missile torpedo flight velocity, plus 1 warp scrammer strength, plus 25% small missile torpedo damage, plus 5% small missile torpedo explosion velocity for the advanced small missile torpedo operation modes, and you get plus 10% scrammer range and plus 10% disruptor optimal range for the advanced frigate command bonus. Overall, pretty straightforward, and it does follow the same rule as with the other Mordor ships. Three high slots, three medium slots, three low slots, three combat and three engineering rigs, a very small cargo hold, and 4,544 defense, which honestly is not a lot. The Garmor is a shield tank, although um, most of my Mordor ships don't have a tank, but shield is the way to go. The capacitor is also uh, very small, after all the Mordor ships are known to have bad capacitors, it can knock 5 targets. This is a very small little boat. And it's definitely not slow, however it might be slower than some of the other faction frigates. Now let's go on to the build. 423.48 DPS with the classic C-type small missile launchers. The flight velocity is 12 km per second, activation time 9.27 seconds, flight time 2.4, explosion velocity 2013, explosion radius 27.54, and the range is 29.7 kilometers. Overall, does work really well with the uh, Warp Scrambler, which has 20.63 kilometer range. And of course, you get the extra strength. You can use a web, but at the same time, you can also use a scanner. This is a classic PvP build that I would probably use on this ship. I have a medium booster and one small capacitor battery, but you know, the capacitor is not looking that good, uh, however it should boost the shield very efficiently. Now the combat rigs, triple loading bay accelerators, one power grid and dual auxiliary thrusters. This is basically the build that I would use on this ship. You can replace the auxiliary thrusters into stabs if you like, but I believe that the ship requires speed and I think it also could require a bit of maneuverability. As for the nano core, uh, I have the blue and white core installed, but I haven't upgraded it. I just have this nano core for the looks, but I would definitely go uh, with the missile torpedo damage on any other nano core. Any core that you pick for this ship will work, so you don't have to worry about that. So the DPS will be unaffected by the nanocore, but again, I like how this ship looks. It is a very cute little boat. Now for the implants, you have a lot of options with missiles. You have the warhead charge, you have the support projection, and you have the tactical missiles. And I will start with the new one, with the tactical missiles. Now the tactical missiles are excellent for tackling because they can give you extra points and they also give you some extra DPS. And this implant will probably work really well with the Ortus and with the Barghest as well. So if you want to have extra points, then I guess this is the way to go. The general units are focused, are going to be focused on shield booster and capacitor battery performance. After all, that is basically the main thing that Mordu ships are lacking. You need extra capacitor and I would say you need extra speed so probably a micro drive general unit will also be very helpful after all the Mordor ships are ships built for kiting however uh, I have the Tarol build on these ships that is very risky to use 
And I personally don't recommend to use the close range builds that I use on these ships because it's very risky and it does require to have some experience Undocking. with the ship before we actually uh, start using the torpedoes on these boats. After all, they are ridiculously expensive. Now, uh, let's take a look at this little boat's DPS with the tactical missiles. Now, let me just place the modules. Okay, this looks nice. And now let me turn on the micro warp drive. Let's lock on the the station. The DPS currently is the same. 7379 hit points. Not all the hit points to be honest. And 6.4 thousand meter per second is the micro warp drive speed. That is actually not that slow. It's quite speedy and should work really well at a 20 kilometer orbit. Now 561.11 DPS and with the next attribute the DPS is 701.39. Honestly that's not bad. Uh, not bad for for this little boat. 30.89 kilometer range, 16 kilometers per second. Are the missiles, adds the missile velocity. That's those missiles are very fast, I'll just say that. Okay, let's dock and let me quickly swap request the accepted. implant and I'll probably swap the the build as... Well, actually, I think I'll show you the, the implant first because that's how I usually go. Now, the warhead charge is my favorite, my favorite missile implant. The warhead charge basically allows you to swap between precision missiles or long range missiles. You can also pick to have a specific damage type, which can be good if you know the resistance hole on target. It can drastically improve the damage output on the target. The unit setup is the same. And now let's undock and let's take a look at the maximum possible DPS. Now, the te technical missiles give you higher paper DPS, while the worker charge gives you good DPS. That is uh, stable, basically the DPS of the worker charge lasts permanently, there is no timer, there is no activation time. While the tactical missiles have the activation time and once the implant is in cooldown, the DPS goes away. 38.61 km, which is really good for small missiles, actually pretty nasty if you ask me. And with the precision missiles, the explosion radius is 13.77. And this should hurt interceptors. This should wreck frigates. And the Garmor is actually behaving like a destroyer. It's very interesting how these ships always punch a class above its weight. And that's the thing about model ships. And you have a lot of alpha damage. So basically... If you catch a frigate off guard, they will be dead very, very soon and very quick because these little things have a lot of alpha. I would say you can even go and fight faction cruisers with it. And in some cases, you can fight battle cruisers, although be very careful around drone modes. Now, you can also use one long range disruptor for, in the, for the initial tackle if you land far away from the target. And then you can use the mic warp drive to quickly approach. And this build is the build that uh, is a bit more risky to use. The torpedo garmor. Now the torpedo garmor will be pretty scary for for any frigate. If you manage to get close to your target, they will be dead pretty quickly. Now I have a dual propulsion build, basically. The micro warp drive is used for the tackle, for approach, and then for the orbit I use the afterburn and have the extender, the medium extender, Undocking. to basically give the ship some buffer. And it can serve as a panic button, you know, just in case, after all, these things are, are very easy to kill. And the medium extender did give some pretty good, you know, it, it did give some pretty good uh, shield. I guess shield bonus, good shield numbers. Now I have 10,000 hit points. The ship is a little bit slower. However, you have the afterburner, 
So when you enter the zero kilometer orbit around your target, you just use the afterburner to maintain a good speed and you will go about 2.1 km per second. This is without any unit to improve the speed, so the, your, your speed will be about the same. And of course, the DPS with the torpedo launchers will be very good. 13.9 km is the range with the long range mode and with the damage application mode or precision mode. The radius is 6.89 meters. Yeah, I do not want to be caught by this little thing if I am flying a frigate because it can be a very very nasty little opponent 080.71 uh, DPS with um, explosive or thermal missiles which again is pretty good overall if you have a lot of ways how to build this ship and we can also do uh, a build like this now this build is, you know, uh, a bit on the risky side, and I would definitely still replace the afterburner with the mic with the mic warp drive. But you can use this build for high sec missions very easily. In high sec, you don't really need a lot of tank. Even this current setup should be uh, good to go. The only thing for PvP uh, that I would replace here is the afterburner. I would use a micro drive and probably would replace the shield booster into an extender. Undocking. And then that would probably be one of the ways how to build the ship. But again, I personally would not use this current build for PvP. It's mostly uh, suited for for missions. In high sec, it will work. In low sec, I would use a PvP build because you know you might get jumped and this ship has a good chance to defend itself against a interceptor so this is one of those ships where you can use a PvP build as a PvE build and it will work just fine 993.26 DPS with only one ballistic control and that is honestly not bad you can even use dual ballistic controls, but that would require a lot of practice. That is more of a PvP build if you use dual ballistic controls. It would give you about 1.2000 DPS. Docking request accepted. And that is honestly pretty scary for a frigate. That will definitely shred interceptors in seconds. And one of the ways how you can deal with those interceptors in frigate PvP. So, how does this little boat handle in combat? Well, its maneuverability is not really the same as some of the other faction frigates. And this is the thing about uh, mortal ships. They do handle a little bit slower. Basically, the Ortos handles like a Bella Cruiser in some cases, while the Bargas handles like a sub capital but a capital ship in between a capital and sub capital that's how it feels all the garmor does behave like a destroyer inertia wise and again that's not really a bad thing one rig can easily solve that problem it's not the fastest rig but at the same time it doesn't really need all that speed because it's already fast enough for uh, very fast enough to evade most of the incoming fire from cruisers, from battle cruisers. Now, the main nemesis of model ships are the run boats, and with the Ortus, I had most fails against prophecies, against well built prophecies, because the drones are one of the only weapon systems that can easily deal with these ships. And that is mostly because the model ships are kiting, they are going to stay away from your weapons range and they are fast, so even if you have range they will be outpacing your turrets. Now there are tricks uh, that you can use in order to hit them and those tricks do work. However, the easiest way to deal with those ships is to use drones. 
If you fly a drone boat, then you probably had the experience of fighting an Ortus or a Garmorant. You probably noticed how drones eat those ships alive, and that's because they have basically no tank. Now I did run my Ortus as a tank ship, and you know, the results were, I would say, acceptable at the best. Wasn't anything, you know, wasn't a fantastic tank like Yashmu or wasn't a phenomenal tank like the Hyperion. It was at best acceptable and you know that's if I were to be 1000% honest that's not really good because uh, you are limited by the capacitor battery after all you have to remember that your capacitor on your mortar ship is not going to be the best so the best option and the best curse of action is to avoid all possible incoming damage. That counts for the Vargas, that counts for the Garmu as well. You can have the general unit for the for the shield booster, for the capacitor battery, but in the end you will be running out of the of cap. And yeah, uh, I had a lot of I have a lot of experience with that. I lost capacitor way too many times with the Ortus. Now you can tank, technically tank the damage on of some ships and most of these ships are going to be missile ships so missile ships are quite easy to tank because they are not going to be applying most damage uh, they're not going to be applying more, a lot of damage on your ship however there are some exceptions to that rule Typhoons, Typhoon 1, Typhoon 2 they will kill you so avoid those things the Raven Striker Raven are easy targets and probably the, the other missile battleships except the, the Bargast and the Typhoons should also be fairly easy targets. Snipers, if you orbit at 30 km full speed they will not hit you. If you orbit even closer they will not hit you but you have to be careful against neutralizers. A Balgorn, for example, you don't brawl a Balgorn, you kite a Balgorn with the with the Ortus, so you stay away from the webs, from the lasers and from the Nosferatus and neutralizers. With the Garmor, don't engage a Balgorn because it does require you to go closer to scramble the Balgorn. Or perhaps if you use the long range missiles you can technically orbit at 38 kilometers. And if you add a missile Guidance computer, you can technically have 45 km range with the small missile launchers, and then you could technically be able to solo a Balgorn with this thing. It does work on on theory, so uh, that's one idea that I will have to try out, especially if you have the general unit for the missile range. So we can technically have 50 km range with the small missile launchers. And that is more than enough to avoid the nasty Nosferatus and Nutalizers that are coming from the Balgorn. And I probably forgot some of the other ships, but I think most of you do understand uh, the tactics behind more ships. And again, I always have to mention this be because these ships are still expensive and losing them can hurt a lot so the best ship for practice the best ship that you can use to practice uh, find the Garmor would be the Breacher Assault the Breacher Assault is very similar to the Garmor it uses missiles it does have a build that can be applied to it the same way as it is applied to the Garmor and there is that one other missile frigate that I forgot the name of, but I guess uh, the the Breacher Assault will have to do that for now. So if you end up losing the Breacher Assault, it's going to be like a 40 million loss mail instead of a 1.5 billion loss mail if it happens to be a Garmor. But when you master the cheaper frigates, you can easily go after the more expensive ones and that is usually the the way how I go I 
did practice this game and I did practice PvP in the early days on cheap ships and then I slowly progressed on the more expensive ones and now, well, and now uh, I have a Bargus that I use in PvP, I have other faction ships but you know, uh, they're not as expensive as they used to be, I used to fight really expensive ships in equipment but not anymore, now all that equipment is basically just isk in my eyes and I don't even use the integration rigs anymore. Now speaking of rig integrations, I have been asked about uh, should you integrate a Garmor? Now that's a very tough, you know, very tough question because the integrations that I would put on this ship would end up costing a lot and frigates are ships that are a lot more, I guess, vulnerable to to losing because frigates are I would say a bit a bit easier to lose than an Ortus or a Bargus. So uh, I don't really think that I would place integrations on the ship. Perhaps the very cheap ones after all you can combine the effects of the implants into one and I guess in a way that can work you can enhance the range and perhaps if you add the expensive integrations and if you end up making the Garmor work as an Ortus in terms of its range with missiles then I guess it actually will be worth it because then you will not be in a big I guess red zone because you will be able to easily evade all the webs and all the E-War coming from the target. So I guess technically if you have the ISK and if you have the experience with the ship then I would say go and get the integrations for it but if you are just starting with the Garmor then I would say keep the ship cheap. Basically if you're still not really comfortable with the ship then uh, go and use it while uh, using a cheaper build so that if you end up Losing it, it's not is not going to be like a five billion or six billion loss mail. But still, a one point five billion loss mail is, uh, you know, quite expensive for a frigate. So, best course of action would be not to lose it. So you know, practice with cheap ships, and after you master the cheap ships, go with the big ones, or well, more expensive ones. As you can see, this little boat does clear the high sectors very quickly. And the only drawback is the fact that it can unlock 5 targets, but again, it's a frigate, so that is to be expected. Overall, I don't really see much of a problem with being able to lock on only 5 targets. After all, the Modu ships are solo ships, 1v1 ships. Currently, I would say the Garmor might be one of the best options out there for solo PvP because with two scrammers we can basically hold most targets and most players actually use dual scrammers on this ship so that's uh, the that's one of the ways how you can run it or you can use one scrambler and one long range disruptor that also seems to work however I would say there are some frigates that you should be careful around the um, Succubus. The Succubus can be tanky, and the Succubus has a afterburner bonus, so your scrambler is not going to be shutting off the afterburner because the scrambler shut, shut off micro pop drives. And the Succubus might be faster than you, so be careful around the Succubus, and perhaps be careful around a Dramil. They can also be very very dangerous actually those are the two faction frigates that uh, you should be mostly careful around the core can be killed very easily and the worm can also be killed fairly easily but the but the damiel and succubus might be a challenge in the end it all goes down to player skill and player experience at least that's from my personal experience. And well, uh, how do I like the Garmor so far? You know, it's 
actually a hilariously fun little boat. I honestly am starting to really like it. It's a very unique looking ship and I was already looking for a new uh, new ship that I will fly. I know that I haven't been flying frigates basically like at all since I started flying the game. I did one Sakabas video like two years ago and I think that was about it. So I think it will be time to uh, get some frigates and I think the the Garmor might be the frigate that I will use. Mostly because the ship does feel like the Ortus. It does feel a lot like the Ortus. Basically like a mini Ortus. And personally that factor makes it uh, easier for me to actually start using it because I'm already well familiar with the orders. I've been flying that thing for for a while now and I see I see a lot of potential with this little boat. I will see what what type of rigs I will use. I, I'm definitely not going to go with integrations. That's that's not going to happen of course. Uh, mostly because I already kind of stopped using integrations only on some certain ships only on ships that uh, I don't plan on losing or on ships that just have the potential to be very lethal but even my primary battleships even the space pen doesn't have any any integrations at the moment and you don't really need to have them in the end they do combine effect but of course, at the same time, on the grand scale, it doesn't really change a lot. In some cases, it does change a lot. When we are talking about tank, it does affect the tank in a lot of ways. However, in terms of DPS, I would say only missiles have most benefits out of it, and perhaps drones, but the all the weapon systems seem to work the best when uh, they are not used as integrations. Of course, if you have all the weapon systems integrated, that's okay. It's just, it just from my personal experience and, you know, uh, the experience from the players can differ and that's okay. We all, we all learn from each other. I learn from you and you learn from me. That's how, that's how it goes and then we can combine the ideas and probably make up a a very very good build but of course in terms of the speed that is one thing that I actually forgot to talk about the speed on this ship it's it's okay it definitely is you know uh, not slow but at the same time some other frigates might be faster and since you can scramble them before they can scramble you, it's not going to be a big problem. So uh, that's basically what that's basically what's been happening with the Ortus, and that's probably going to be happening with this little ship as well. So that was the the Garmor. Honestly, Docking request a accepted. very very dangerous little boat and I personally just can't wait to actually start flying it into PvP. Definitely will earn a a spot in my main PvP ship lineup. But with that being said, I really hope that you enjoyed it. Also, I really hope that I could help you out with building your own ship. Or at least I hope that I could inspire you to create your own builds for the Garmor. And with that being said, I love you all, fly safe, stay safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.